Waiting for mortgage rates to drop could be a costly mistake. Once rates drop, new home buyers will enter the market and prices will soar even higher. At Churchill Mortgage, you can get a free analysis and learn how to avoid the trap of waiting for interest rates to drop. Buy now and refi later at churchillmortgage.com. This is a paid advertisement. NMLS ID 1591, NMLS Consumer Access.org, Equal Housing Lender, 1749 Mallory Lane, Suite 100, Brentwood, Tennessee, 37027. The following series is outlandish, unapologetic, and uncut. Listener discretion is advised, but not enforced. Oh, man. Well, it's about that time, recovering from, the, you know, the J-Man Show 200 and Jams. What, what number is Jams? Oh, yeah, yeah, 21. And I'm going to tell you one way or another, it was a very fascinating experience. Met a lot of great people, but it's time to get back to work on the Hangout Sesh. So that means we're going to go ahead and fire up the intro right now because you won't believe who I'm hanging out with this week. Okay, fine. We'll team up. I'm J-Man, and this is J360 Hangout, here on J360 Radio! Waiting to buy a home? The Churchill Mortgage Team says now is a great time to buy. Waiting could be a costly mistake because when rates drop, new home buyers will flood the market, driving up home prices. Go to churchillmortgage.com for your free analysis and see how home values can outpace rates to help you build wealth over time faster. This is a paid advertisement. NMLS ID 1591. NMLS Consumer Access.org. Equal housing lender. 1749 Mallory Lane, Suite 100, Brentwood, Tennessee, 37027. Need extra money for college? ISL Education Lending Scholarship Program provides $1,000 for college expenses. Registration is easy and no essay is required. Visit www.iowastudentloan.org slash register to learn more. The scholarship is open to Iowa residents who are in high school and college students, as well as parents of those students. Register by November 30th for your chance at one of the 45 awards at www.iowastudentloan.org slash register. Oh, hello, J360 Legion. This is J-Man, of course. Just chilling here at J360 Radio here on this nice, nice Friday night, if you will. And let me tell you this. I'm hanging out with somebody that's amazing, that's been a part of the Jam fam for a while now. I played, like, multiple parts of his tracks, and I've just been keeping an eye on his growth as a musician and a performer and everything. Ladies and gentlemen, we will not delay any longer because guess what? I'm hanging out tonight with Jack Fox from the great band Final Shift. Woo! Welcome aboard, this Jack. This is the part where I talk. Oh, no. <laughs> How you doing, man? <laughs> hey, man. I'm doing pretty good. How about yourself? I'm doing okay. I'm doing okay. Consuming much caffeine and trying to keep an open mind so I can speak properly. Well, you know, I am trying to get a better time shift here, man. But, you know, that's just the, the, the way that... um. You know, things have been stabilized for us, if you will. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the way the world spins, I'm afraid. I mean, well, we could do go. a Doctor Who scenario, but I don't see exactly what would happen. And they did so many things to that universe, things are displaced. Oh, no. Doctor Who. That's uh, Let's not go down that plot hole. We'll, be, we'll get nothing else done. I'll just talk about Doctor Who nonstop. <laughs> well, then that's, that's true, my, too. My favorite show. Okay, well, we'll put a pin in that one, then. <laughs> <laughs> that could be a whole different podcast for a whole oh, different time oh yes oh speaking of time we still on that whole continuum ship aren't we i can say the same thing about yeah. star trek which one do you want to talk about you eh. want to talk about tng the original series do you want to talk about voyager do you want to talk about deep space nine enterprise if you really want to go there hey enterprise was good i don't know what anybody else's problem with that was <laughs> I mean, i'm just saying you know <laughs> I don't, it was I, the jump to jump to vibe got me like the blue was so good yeah, but you know, I think what happened was the tacked on ending because they did not end the damn series. You know, one of them kind of things. They never had that right. I think the only time they had that conclusion sorted was Voyager, and even then they rushed that to death. Good point. <laughs> good, good point. <laughs> <laughs> Looking back on all of them, yeah, good point. And now what they're doing to Picard's legacy is just like, you know, laughable. But that's the state of the industry we're in. I think I think it's a it's probably a product of the like, like you're saying the industry and we're trying to rush things out as much as we can now because like I think when they started off Star Trek obviously it was like a, a TV sequential kind of release so they'd have one every week but they'd be shooting that months in advance mm-hmm. and now they're kind of still doing it how 
they've got the internet to, to kind of react to. So their reaction is like immediate. You don't get the everyone talking about it at work anymore. You've got like two minutes after the show's ended or like even mid-show, people are tweeting about it or posting statuses on Facebook and all kinds of craziness. So they can't they can't have that delay in having ideas then shooting it. They have to just be like, right, okay, we need to shoot this immediately, release it, and then as soon as we see what's going on, we have to rewrite that next bit. And oh, it must be absolutely terrifying to be a writer these days. You know, some you write. <laughs> I remember sitting there writing a few things, and I'm like, as you speak on all that stuff, the flashbacks are coming. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh man like yeah you do have to have stuff prepared and then not only that see mainstream media got this right at least you got the luxury of being on a writing board and a team of other writers like you know and you compete oh, for that actual God, spot but whereas like when you're in the indie crowd you are the guy <laughs> or the girl yeah. most of the time and you have to get that crap done and then god help you if oh. you write yourself in a hole <laughs> Yeah, if you, oh man, imagine doing that. Imagine being the only writer on a TV show and then you make a plot hole and you can't find a way out of it. And then everyone just starts tweeting about it and being like, oh, you screwed up. Yeah, uh, but. Terrifying. Uh, and you know what? The best result would that be like, that's your ending. <laughs> Cancellation. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> it was all a dream. Quick, quick, quick. Yes. It was all a dream. It wasn't real. <laughs> the, the, the saving writer's throw right there. <laughs> Oh god, yeah. And then he woke up. Ta-da. <laughs> you know what? There were a lot of shows that ended with that. <laughs> that I think about oh. it. A lot of them from the seventies and eighties, like, um, oh my god. And not even not even comedy shows, like drama shows like Saint Elsewhere. Oh my yeah. god. Oh, what was it? I had one in my head right there and it's just gone. Oh, there's a couple like like you're saying the seventies though, the seventies had T V shows that like ended on the most ridiculous plot twist ever and you're just kind of thinking <laughs> what how, how did you, that makes no sense how did that work but it was like the 70s and no one cared so they were just like yeah we've ended the show we're doing something else now grow up that's true like they didn't give a damn at all i mean one way or another they were like yeah that's it <laughs> or, if, or, we don't care anymore. <laughs> or if you're sitting there looking at it, you're like huh this ain't coming back another year is it <laughs> <laughs> that's a very odd ending we're not gonna see this anymore shit. you know <laughs> that just, just walked out the room <laughs> shit you know what though like i said if i was doing the j-man show on j360 tv and if it was like the last season i just walk off the set that's it this has all been fake i lied the whole time <laughs> gone <laughs> <laughs> just walk right off the damn set uh, or see like everything go as crazy as can be and be like well then that's it <laughs> my talk here's done i'm gone <laughs> Yep, shrug. <laughs> <laughs> so you doing the emoji shrug, just be like, I'm done. I don't care anymore. I'll see you guys later. <laughs> That's about right. Matter of fact, oh, I think God. I ended one of my shows doing that. <laughs> I was like, nah. <laughs> Say some really controversial shit, and then you'd be like, meh, I don't care. Meh. <laughs> yep. Well, you know, I Man. always wanted I always wanted to do a news show, you know, at one time. <laughs> Maybe we could hold out for that. <laughs> Oh man, that'd be something funny. What's happening in the world today? Nah, eh. some something, something's always happening. The, I don't the, know. The same thing as it always been. But now I'm gonna slide you over to the Twitter reporter and see what they say next. Cool. <laughs> oh. Because well, Twitter's an actual Twitter. good source. Yeah, but like, well, you have to go some, do some digging though. Like, if you can find like, get your way through the murk and mire and mud, and then find the truth. Oh, I give you money. Yeah, money you can find out what's really going on these days. Yeah. Oh, well, then there's their, well, God, what isn't on Twitter? <laughs> let's, let's not go down that rabbit hole. Though. Twitter <laughs> seems to have just become where, where you can do anything you want, whenever you want, however you want. Twitter is, yeah. Twitter is crazy, man. Yeah, yeah let, let, let's put a pin in that one, too. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> let's just, like let's just glue that pin in as well. Let's just leave it there. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's, it's going to be there for a while, and TikTok's not too far behind on it. Let's just be honest. Oh no, I, I've I've refused to get TikTok. Oh I've really? There it. ain't gonna be no I've, final shift on TikTok. I've, oh, I don't know. I, like I, fuck. I don't. Know. I think I think my music's on t- TikTok, but I don't. I don't personally have an account. Uh, hmm. I've been kind of put off of it because I have members of family that have TikTok, and I just see what they're watching, and it's like, oh no. This is so <laughs> bad. <laughs> yeah. But I don't know. Like, what do you think? Uh, do you think it's worth getting? 
Eh, I got a TikTok, but I hardly use the damn thing, man. Because, I mean, for a while there, I was, like, knee-deep in radio. And then I was like, eh, I should do some more video sketches like I used to. But then I was like, oh, what the hell is this? Oh, my God. <laughs> I don't like that at all. It started with Vine, and I was gone so much worse. Do you remember Vine? Oh. I, I do. I mean, Vine was okay. I mean, at the end of the day, you are like, you know, at least then it was... It was there, you know what I mean? But TikTok's like everywhere. Oh, TikTok, you can't get rid of it. It's like, you see TikTok on Instagram reels, and you're just like, why? Why have you done that? <laughs> like, you can still see like, the TikTok sign and the, the username. Well, I suppose that's clever marketing, really. You want to show that real thing. Reels on Instagram seem to be kicking off really hard. Some of the most mm. views I've ever had on some posts on Instagram have been on reels. But yeah. I, I can kind of see why you'd share that kind of stuff from TikTok over to Instagram just to get that extra audience. But, God, it's, not, it's like, I don't know, man. I could see you doing a dance choreography thing or two. Yeah, probably. But at the same time, <laughs> it just really depends. Because the thing is, I'm like, huh, it'll have to wait. Maybe if I'm doing more J360 TV stuff, we'll see. But, like, at the same time, for me, it ain't, it, it ain't worth getting. <laughs> no. Well, I might. I might. I'll just see what's going on. I'm doing some... Uh, some I'm thinking about doing some face showing performance stuff soon. Maybe TikTok's a good idea. I don't know. We'll see oh, what happens. Oh, nice. Hey, hey, face showings, huh? Well, you know, if you ain't doing it on jams, you ain't doing it right. I'm just kidding. I'll give you the, the initial press release, and we'll, we'll do the network together. We'll get it all done. <laughs> no, I, I have. I, I, it sounds like I'm doing something crazy. My face has been on the final shift on Instagram plenty of times. At least like, oh, three I believe or four that. Times. As we get into the crux of the interview here, and like not only that, I'm excited that you're here, my man. Like, what inspired you to start this awesome, you know, this awesome band here that mixes different kind of sounds and genres together? Oh, um, well, first of all, I'm really excited to be here too, man. Thank you very much. This is a I've been like looking forward to this opportunity. You've been really supportive, and it's always been cool to have a chat with you every now and again. So I'm really happy to be here. But um, thank you, thank you. No, no problem at all. Thank you. Um, I've just uh. That's a, that's a weird question because I hadn't really considered it until recently. Like, like even the past couple of weeks, I've been kind of thinking about how I got to where I am and why I write the way I do. But I've been playing uh, guitar at least for what, 14, 15 years now. So I kind of grew up with a dad that plays guitar and really into his hard rock and metal and stuff. So I was raised on like Iron Maiden and Ozzy Osbourne and Metallica and all that kind of the, the standard the standard thrash and power metal kind of stuff. And then it, when I started writing my own bits and pieces, I had the more metalcore. I was like a teenager in the old noughties, I suppose you call them. That's, that sounds really weird to call it that. <laughs> so I was, I was listening to like early Trivium and Bullet for My Valentine and all the, the good stuff. Oh, yes, so, yes. Yeah, so, so when, I was, when I went to record or even like write my own stuff, my basis was all kind of like that that kind of approach, that kind of guitar sound. Uh, I mean, we can go super specific if you want, because I'm kind of a a sad person when it comes to, like, well, not sad, but like I really like being detail oriented when it comes to instruments. So we, hey, we can go down that rabbit hole and talk about stuff. But uh, when I started recording my own stuff, it was um, it, it was kind of in that vein. It was I've got some demos on SoundCloud from years ago now. And it's all kind of very thrashy and um, loads of little sweet pick attempts and kind of shreddy-ish, but I couldn't really get it down. And then I started listening to, what was it? Cell Dweller. Have you ever heard of Cell Dweller? I've heard of him. Heard of him. He, he He's like three different people. Well, he's like Clayton, but he does Cell Dweller. He's been doing that for decades. He's got um, Circle of Dust, which is, I guess, heavier stuff. And he's got Scandroid. And Scandroid is what really got me into this kind of style of music because that's very... If you listen to Scandroid and you listen to like my early attempts at this, so like uh, like Arcade Demon or Day Racer, stuff like that, you'll hear the same kind of like um, more amateur attempt to do something like Scandroid because it's like that, that kind of almost 80s kind of thrashy metal guitar playing, but with an overload of really nice layered synths. So I took that approach and was like, let's see if I can do that too. I've also got, I, I would be a fool to not mention that I have a really good friend who's part of this as well. Um, when he can be, he's, we're both very busy. Addy, 
Um, he's on the, the Discord channel, I think. Uh, you might have seen him popping about, but we the initial stuff, the first at least two EPs before the, the one I released, the, the single I released earlier this year, um, those two EPs, we basically sat together for hours and hours and hours and did that all together. So I have to thank him as well for his input and his approach for things. He has his own, he likes listening to... Uh, he he goes way in deep with the more um, not really experimental, but the more crazy side of synth. I'm trying to think of a few examples, but he it'd be really good to have him on as well to have a chat because his side of the synth spectrum is crazy. <laughs> nice, but uh, yeah, he he listens to some really experimental stuff. Um, I just wish I could think of a few names. I'm I'm scrabbling to think of the names of the stuff I listen to right now, but. Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, I kind of approach this from like the '80s guitar virtuoso kind of side of things, so it's all very snappy and quite snarly, which is where I kind of find my home in playing guitar. So it just kind of came naturally with adding '80s keyboards and pop sounds into '80s rock and metal. So that's that's final shift basically. Wow! And there's only just two of you guys in the band. Yeah, it's just the two of us. Um, we've had some help from another couple of friends of ours. Every now and again, there's like been a, a couple of guest solos, and I've worked with a couple of different drummers. But uh, the majority of it is me and Addy. So Very there awesome, we go. man. <laughs> Outrageous, because, I mean, the results that we, like, even playing it on jams and everything, like, I- I'm definitely a fan. One way or another, I was sold. As soon as I saw, <laughs> Thank you like, very much. It-, it said synth and heavy metal, Dude, I was there. I was like, nah, I need this in my life. <laughs> and I was like, yes. <laughs> well, I'm glad someone enjoys it. I'm glad someone's enjoying it. I mean, because when, I, like, I remember that day too, man. I was like looking for like new people to be on jams as well. And then all of a sudden I saw you pop up there and I heard uh, Time Flies, but you're the pilot. And I was like, oh, oh yeah. my God, yes. Please be on my show. Please. Oh, thank you so much. That's probably one of my favorite songs. Um, that that one and a couple of ones that I'm working on right now are probably going to be my favorite tracks for this year. Very um, cool. But I'm, I'm, I'm trying to do some a wee bit nervous for trying the stuff that I'm going to be putting out in the next, hopefully, two, three months. Hey, man, That's, it's going to This pay is when things are a wee bit scary. Yeah, well, I hope so. I really hope so because this is... Um, well, if you've listened to... I'm assuming you've listened to... Oh, it's, I have pretentious sound. I'm assuming you've listened to my back, back, back catalogue. Um, no, I've, uh, I've never done vocals except for a cover, and even then, the the, co- the vocals were really heavily uh, over processed just to make it sound a wee bit more disturbing. <laughs> but um, I, I'm going for vocals for the next few songs, and that's terrifying. <laughs> Hey, no, nah, man, you got my 100% support. I mean, I've heard some people that can flow and have bars, but then there are times where, like, you get that special one, like, let's just say uh, J-Man, when he tried to be singing some stuff without using his rocker voice. <laughs> <laughs> That's some scary um, stuff there. But, yeah, I'm, totally I, I bet you can I nail it. I bet you can nail it. Well, thank it. you, man. I really appreciate that. Thank you. That's a massive vote of confidence. That's really cool. Thank you. Hey, I'm behind you, man. <laughs> well i appreciate that um yeah so that's that's been the, the the headaches of the past couple of weeks at least has been uh, actually decent lyric writing and trying to record over instrumental parts and trying to build instrumentals around vocal lines and it's all it's it's a totally new unexplored territory for me and it's quite it's it's really exciting it's really really exciting Mm-hmm. and it sounds like it too man and like one way or another just like i always say before like you seen the thing that i posted about like you know it's not about perfection but tenacity yeah no, no i absolutely agree with that there's like you can spend years trying to be perfect at something when you've just missed your window mm-hmm. so like if you can keep trying to be the very very best but if you don't put it out there no one's gonna notice no one's gonna hear it it's like being the world's worst, cra- like world's best craftsman, rather, and then hiding all your furniture or whatever you make in a warehouse and shutting the doors and locking it away until you get it absolutely perfect. There's no, there's no point. Right. Like that. That's why I can't really, honestly, listen to some of the, the first EP. I know it was just last year, but I don't listen to some of it purely because if I do, all I'm going to do is critique it. I'm going to be like, that mix is awful. 
that synth could have sounded better. That guitar sounds too bitey or sharp. I could have made that a wee bit mellow. There's bass bits that I could have done differently. But I'm sure, like, once the nerves of this writing cycle are done with, um, like, I'll go back and just go, no, that's my first stuff. I put that out there. I didn't really care if anyone liked it or not. This was this was the, the pure kind of basis of what I'm doing. So I'm sure I'll appreciate it at some point. But right now I'm so nerve wracked. <laughs> I'm just like, I don't want to do this. I don't want to listen to this anymore. <laughs> it's all yeah. old. Put it in the bit. Because it's still raw and everything. And, you know, like, yeah. there are times, like, when you look back at your old stuff, I mean, but that's how you grew as a person. I mean, I'm I'm kind of like that when it comes to, like, the earlier um, episodes of the J-Man show, you know? Like, I love the first season because I was in your face and I was cutting edge. But then after a while, <laughs> you know, I was like, damn, I cussed too much. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, oh, God, that is such a problem. I, like, um, I... Just as, a, just as a bit of background, I used to do security. At, well, I still do security as a, as a job, as a main income, until this, until I become a global rock star and take over the world and all that. Classic, mm. amazing dreams. But uh, while I work, I work in security, and uh, I used to have a real hassle with swearing a lot because I used to work nightclubs. Yeah. So you just have people swearing all the time, and your colleagues are tired, and you're tired, so you end up swearing too much, and then, oh... Yeah, and then you have kids and you're like, I need to put a sensor on this. I cannot swear so much. <laughs> yeah. it, it's getting bad. And especially being from where I am, I'm not sure if you're, well, this sounds a wee bit stereotypical, but we swear with the best of them. Absolutely. Oh, I think you guys, pretty much uh, invented the stuff. <laughs> you, you, you guys pretty much are the, the motherland of that. <laughs> That's all there is to it. Especially we, in the good old land make of an Scotland. Art form. Yeah. Well, we make we make it something special, but we I don't know. I think it's the charisma that we kind of get away with it sometimes. No. <laughs> yeah. We, we it, swear and we don't like it, but we're nice about it. <laughs> I mean, I used to say this all the time. At least he's honest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's honesty, pure yeah, honesty. I mean, because sometimes, like some people will do that kind of stuff, but then you realize they're being prudes, and it's like, hey, you know what? Shut the fuck up, okay? <laughs> It's, it's, yeah, I think I think it's, there's people that take it. Well, it's always your own opinion, of course. But no, uh, I always, I always wonder, like when people go, "Oh, you can't swear so much." You're like, well, who says? Who, right. who told you that? Who told you that? Like, why? Why can't we fucking swear? Like, like yeah, it's exactly. just a word. It's a way of expressing yourself. If you try and hinder the way you express yourself, you're not going to get anywhere. You're not going to be able to tell anyone how you feel. If you want to be like, mm-hmm. I'm fucking happy, dude, then how are you going to tell someone how happy you are unless you say fucking happy? Yeah. You know what I mean? You know, it's just really, Sometimes really you fucked up. Up. <laughs> Like, the way people go about, you know, censoring other people. I'm like, you can't fucking police what anybody else says. I mean, just at the end of the damn day, you're lying out of your own ass, and it shows, you punk-ass bitch. Let the man cuss and have his <laughs> own way about it. You know, at the end of the damn day, I, I, I get so tired of that bullshit sometimes. I just really know that one way or another, it's why I created an uncut show. And if they can't deal with it, then get the fuck out of here. It's just simple as that. Watch you know? something else. <laughs> go, go, go watch something else. Yeah. You know, and, and that's the thing. Like, you know, you want to be authentic. Like, I always said that anyway. Like, you know, I made a deal with my dad not to cuss on the J-Man show. But, you know, there were a few episodes I recently made that I got <laughs> had to go over that because, like, the subject matter I cover, you got to say it sometimes. I mean, it's just well, like. sometimes people write in the lyrics. You have to quote lyrics. No. You, have to, you have to quote that. Like, um, no. Like, die, motherfucker, die, motherfucker, die. Do you remember that kind of stuff? That yeah, was, like. like you have to say it. it's in the lyrics. You have to. I mean, you have to swear. I that's mean, right excuse. off the bat, it's like that's the rap community. <laughs> uh, that, yeah, pretty much. God, yeah. You <laughs> you listen know? to like, oh, uh, here we go. You want to listen to Eminem or Machine Gun Kelly? Right. You're gonna hear some swears. You're gonna hear some drug references. You're gonna hear some sex references. Oh, gotta be careful. Don't wanna lead you astray from this. I mean, party yeah. wholesome lifestyle you find yourself in. I mean, dude, the number one, um, the number one hit single at one time in the early two thousands was "Shake Your Ass," and the guy was talking about he grabbed his dick in his hand and all that stuff. I mean, let's just be for real, okay. <laughs> like, like, no! like you, you know what I mean? Like, like, yeah, I, it's just like I guess it's once a, once again, it's one of those things where it's a um, contradictory statement. So it really depends on who you talk to. Kind of like when like certain movies are made, and then like you know some people love Conan. The, a lot of people love Conan the Barbarian, but yes, whoever you talk to, 
loves Conan the Destroyer. Now, if you listen to somebody like me, and you have, yeah, I like them both. Yeah. You know? You got it. Well, I, well, one's the genesis for the other, isn't it? You got yeah, to usually. Gotta love the Barbarian to get everything else. The yeah. Destroyer came after, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, they went for a lighter, softer appeal. I mean, back in 1984, you get away with a lot of shit. <laughs> Let's just be honest. Oh, dude. I, like, if we circle back to this, the swearing thing, it's like, I think it's uses a bit of edgy controversialness like um mm-hmm. especially these days but these days it's really quite saturated like you kind of swear because you can and oh i'm edgy because you're swearing well not really not like really. if you go back generally generationally like you have bands like wasp you ever heard of wasp oh yes blackie lawless he was writing songs about the most aggressive sex you can have and that was like <laughs> mid 80s mid 80s and then it was like motley Crue as well mm-hmm. like girls 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 that came out and personal favorite of mine like motley Crue is one of my favorite bands don't know why but great taste man just great again taste. based on it man you gotta love it it's yeah, if you, you know. want to love the 80s that's motley Crue. that's rat and winger and all that kind of stuff well i don't know about winger you, you've got to love winger that kip winger is a, a, he's a songwriter and a half he's yeah. amazing if you like take a minute to sit down and listen to his stuff he's an orc uh what did he do he's like an orchestral songwriter now a, com- a proper composer he's crazy I mean, he has grew into his own. Let's just be honest. <laughs> My but dad for... grew into his own in the end time. He's crazy. Mm. Well, I mean, after years and years of beef, some butthead trolling him and shit. I mean, who, who uh, couldn't go crazy? Metallica using his face as a dartboard in the was it yeah. Nothing Else Matters video or something like that? Yeah. Yeah. Of course, that was when Metallica <laughs> was uh, Metallica at the time. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. James and Petro was drinking and things were crazy. No. <laughs> no. But yeah, Megadeth too. I mean, let's just be honest. Yeah, but you know, at really. the same time, when you use it for expression and stuff like that, somebody might be going through something. Oh, I, I, I would like to see it. Like, say, like if you stubbed your toe, and you're like, "Ooh, that felt good," and we know that's a lie. <laughs> I mean, like, or just something be- you come down, it's like, "Gosh darn it!" No, that doesn't quite cover it. No. You bang your toe. You want to scream something like "fuck." To the point where you're just, speaking just, in tongues. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. You ever stubbed your toe so hard you can't speak? You ever had Ooh, that before? Like, you yes, just make that I have. Noise. Yes, oh, I it's have. brutal. Oh, God. It, it, it was the pinky, too, man. I haven't done it in a long man. time. It oh, no, pinky. don't tell me that. That's not good. Mm-mm. Pinky toes are so bad. For such you... a small thing, they hurt so much. Indeed, and that did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that, that really, oh, whew. Brought back the memory, man. I thought I got oh, rid of that, not, but that's, that's Vietnam flashbacks of a pain that I don't want to remember. No, uh, you know, shoot, oh, Vietnam. No. Hey, yeah. hey, Vietnam. Try Cold <laughs> War. Let's go with Cold War. Oh, I'm not Cold War. Oh, I wish my, that's how my pinky toe is after I stub my toe. It was like war of cold, trying to freeze it and make it not sore anymore. <laughs> and then you're like, ah, ah, like like Peter oh, Griffin in that whole guy references. There we go. Yes. <laughs> We good now. Ah. <laughs> oh, no. Hey, man, but guess what, though? To get people that haven't listened to Jams, and I don't know why they didn't, because Jams is fucking awesome. But yep. the thing is, to give them a chance, we're going to go ahead and play your first track, which is Time Flies, But You're the Pilot. All righty? Oh, yes.
Help spread love and feel the joy of giving back. During the 2023 Subaru Share the Love event at Beardmore Subaru, Subaru will donate $250 to the charity of your choice for every new Subaru purchased or leased. The ASBCA, Make-A-Wish, Meals on Wheels, the National Park Foundation, the Housing Foundation of Sarpy County, or off at Air Force Base's Airman's Attic. Plus, we will give an additional $100 locally to help even more. Go to BeardmoreSubaru.com to learn more. Submit charity selection by 1-12-24. Promotion ends 1-2-24. See Subaru.com for more details. This holiday season, recharge with the Planet Fitness Black Card for just $1 down and $24.99 a month. So instead of fighting a stranger in the mall over a stuffed T-Rex, bring a friend for free and work out on the TRX. Instead of freezing in line for a lame holiday deal, relax in the Black Card Spa with some hydro massage feels. Instead of being trapped at your in-laws, <laughs> escape to any of our 2400 Planet Fitness locations. Sign up today for the Planet Fitness Black Card, just $1 down and $24.99 a month. Cancel any time, deal is November 30th. See club for details. And you know, that was Time Flies But You're the Pilot <laughs> by Final Shift. And my man Woo-hoo! has a good stories about it. So come on and tell us, man. Like, what was the funny story behind that song? Tell me. Okay. And everybody. Well, like most of the most of the songs that we did before then was uh, it was based on like a riff or we like the sound of this keyboard or I got a new instrument and was like we let we, let's write with this and we built a song out of that um, or it built from a song from the past to so malevolent device and um, was actually a totally different song. That I used like this similar riff and then built that into a totally different piece that was more fitting for Final Shift. Um, but Time Flies But You're the Pilot was uh, based on uh, a bit of graffiti, a bit of spray paint on a wall. Um, me and Addy were walking down a, Aberdeen's got a long beachfront. Mm-hmm. So we, I'm, I like keeping fit and making myself hurt myself in a constructive way. So I used to do like a weighted vest walk. So I like wore thirty kilos. I think it's like thirty kilos is like sixty something pounds. I, I think mm-hmm. weighted vest. And um, we used to walk along the beach, and at the top end of the beach, there's like these concrete like little booths that you can sit in to kind of get away from the wind and stuff. And someone had spray painted a bunch of these inspirational quotes, and one of them was "Time flies, but you're the pilot." And I just remember walking um, this little route that we used to do. And I kind of had the da, 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 in my head. So I was going to write lyrics for it. That was going to be a melody line for a vocal line. But then I, I played on the guitar and I loved playing it so much that I built the rest of the song around it. So that super glassy synth is meant to kind of be a beach kind of feel, I think, passively. And then the, the guitar line was just me trying to sing the vocal with an instrument before actually doing the vocal and then decided you know what, this guitar actually sounds amazing, let's just keep it as an instrumental. So that was the whole genesis of the song, was just a, a bit of graffiti on a wall. Wow, man. That is nice. <laughs> I knew it, I wasn't crazy. I knew those Outrun vibes were in there. Uh, this is awesome. <laughs> Dude, tears of joy, man, just saying. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. <laughs> like, you know thank what I mean? You, buddy. <laughs> Anytime, man. It feels good to be on the right track. See, that's what I'm talking about. Synergy. I'm like that with the Jam Fam. Who? And y'all yeah. thought I was just a landlord. You see, that's the. Th- <laughs> <laughs> I'm not paying rent. <laughs> I'm living oh, here, though. Oh, the hell you ain't. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Oh, that'd be funny if it was like a jams episode with just you guys in there, and then all of a sudden, like as soon as y'all say something disparaging, and then you hear me off the off screen, like, "Oh yes, you are." <laughs> we should do that. We should do like a massive get like Lavalette and stuff like that, and get a massive like conversation going on, like a massive group chat. That'd be sick. Hey, get working on it. I'd be well. Keep me in in the loop, dude. I'm absolutely down for that. It'd be so good. Oh, always, man. Definitely gonna do that. Shoot, that shoot, that is right there in my books. By the way, you've been reading my stuff. <laughs> oh, I, I, I will. I've got a bit of a backlog, but I absolutely will. I will get it all written, all read down. Oh god, like everybody Things read are crazy. Dude. <laughs> yeah, I mean, especially what both you and I got going on. Yeah, we're pretty busy dudes, but we make this stuff happen. That's one way. Or absolutely, another. you've as got to. We... You've got to. You got to keep social ties, man. Otherwise, yeah. you're just gonna burn out. Or not only that, you're going to be on an island all by yourself, and that's not fun. No, because uh, no one can hear your music. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. <laughs> just, 
Screaming hey, out to the ocean. <laughs> see, that was too good, man. Like, like right there. See, that's why the Jam Fam's awesome. Jam Fam forever, by the way. Hey, uh, speaking of which, um, <laughs> speaking of which, Jack, um, about um, the next track, this one's called Replicants Rise. Do you have a story about that before I play it? Uh, okay. We were talking about TV shows earlier. Uh, Replicants Rise, that if you've ever watched Stargate SG-1, you yes. will absolutely know what replicant is do you remember that storyline the yes, bugs that I were do. like self-replicating and making big space starships and stuff and taking yeah. over the world and stuff yep that that was the premise of this track so uh, a load of those uh, songs on that ep don't have you kind of like standard pop structure it's kind of chaotic and i i wanted to use that as a kind of um as a as a premise for that whole experience of that ep so it's all really kind of um, not distracting. Well, a little bit, but it makes you feel a wee bit uncomfortable. So Replicants Rise, I had that total vibe of things going totally awfully wrong. So that didn't really come up with a name until I started the song. And then halfway through, I was like, oh, this kind of makes me feel like something's going really, really wrong really, really quickly. And there's nothing you can do about it. So Replicants Rise, because I remember Stargate SG-1, those little bastards were awful. Oh, Yes. <laughs> and the fact that you mentioned Stargate SG-1 Man, you're my brother for life I love that <laughs> Star- Stargate SG-1 was friggin' awesome, man uh, it, was, yeah. it was really good I didn't watch Atlantis or Universe What was it, Universe? When yeah, you don't need ship. to watch those, man They suck ass Don't, don't even try it <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I thought you were SG-1 crew that was, that was an amazing show Shoot, everything that was great about SG-1 was kind of kind of thrown through the dirt in Atlantis and then just completely shitted on in universe. That's why we don't have another one now. You know? Yeah. <laughs> no, no. Jack O'Neill, that uh, Daniel oh, Jackson, yeah. and Teal'c Teal is my boy. Teal'c, the, yes. the voice of Kratos. Oh, my God. He's such yes. a good guy. Boy. Oh, man. I, I, I miss those days of just being there watching sci-fi just to see how things turn out. Watching I'm people to shoot the shit of aliens with P90s. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh man by the way let's give him give him a taste of this man the next song from final shift is called replicants rise take it let's away
right, that was Replicants Rise from Final Shift again. Man, much respect to you, Jack. I'm telling you, you are awesome. Thank you very much, man. It's uh, you've got to stop doing this. We've been talking about ego, and if you keep complimenting me, it's go- I'm going to take off. Oh no, no, no! no. Gonna, Don't you do gonna... it! Don't you do it, man! <laughs> I will no, make sure no, one way or another we will throw like these nice. Um, let's see. You've seen The Godfather, right? What we're going to do is we're going to put some uh... cement on your feet. You ain't going nowhere. <laughs> That's the first <laughs> horse head in my bed. Let's not do that. I'm sorry already. I oh no, no, that no, again. man. That's that's a different kind of approach. We ain't doing that. You're not out of the fam. You're in the fam. <laughs> I'm gonna make you an offer you can't refuse. You understand um, how this is gonna go down? What's gonna happen is you're gonna play some more songs and they're gonna be on J360 jams. And when we are, no, I want J360 jams. No, no, you listen to me. My Brando is a little bit better than your Brando. Do you know what my Brando has got no you? chance. Uh, I sound like Trump with a sore throat. Yeah, you, hey, hey, man, you better you. not do that. that, that that'll hurt you. <laughs> that, that'll oh, hurt no. you right there. Dude, like, doing the Trump voice hurts, man. I'm just saying. Uh, God. I, I'm not a citizen of your wonderful country, but so I will keep my opinion to myself. No, but, no, no. Oh go ahead, God. dude. Go, go ahead. I say enough on it anyway. Go on. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm gonna i'm gonna avoid the whole political thing that's 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 not a wise well, move for well, a career <laughs> well that's that's underst- you know a long time ago people didn't have a problem talking about it but nowadays everybody got sensitive it's weird <laughs> you know? we were talking about social media earlier and it's like it's basically that everyone's got an opinion and then some people have a really heavy-handed opinion and everyone else agrees with it man you're in trouble yeah but you know the funny part about that is see i dug a ditch and see, that ditch right there is made for all those that have those heavy-handed opinions so they can fall right in it. And as I look yeah. at him and laugh, i am like, hey, it's time for the next segment of the show. Well, hey, that was really good. I like that. You know what I mean? <laughs> that was smooth. That was a good transition, buddy. <laughs> I'm like, you know. <laughs> hey, been at the game uh, for a long time, my man. <laughs> That's just the way nah, it I goes. like it. <laughs> I like it, I like it, it's good. You know what I mean? But yeah, it's like, one way or another, I, I'm so glad that I met you and a lot of people in the Jam Fam, and just making this content here is just, it keeps me going too. You guys help me out as much as I hope I help you guys out. And I know that you got oh, absolutely. some, I know you got some Final Shift merch that's coming around and all, do you want to talk about that a little bit, you know? Yeah, yeah, um, okay, so the reason this came about is, well, obviously, when you, when you start a band, you want to have people like you want to advertise it and you want to make it a slightly commercial product otherwise people don't see it so obviously you can do the whole like share it on instagram you can do the share on facebook you can make adverts and stuff but i always like the idea of one day i will walk down the street and someone will wear a t-shirt that has something to do with me and that is the most egotistical thing you can say i think is i want people to wear my stuff but um when it, you've got to have it like all successful bands have merchandise have t-shirts have sweatbands have all this kind of stuff so when final shift first came about with that original really distorted scratchy logo that i still really love um i was like right well how do i put it on a t-shirt how do i put it on clothes so we had that for a bit but um we got the new logo from uh, my boy hussein um i'm not gonna I, I can't remember i think it's hussein design on instagram he's a really nice guy and uh the logo is amazing but when when we got the new logo and the new designs i kind of was getting experimental with the uh, artwork so i make nearly daily artwork posts on instagram now and after a while i was like these are really nice these would look good on a t-shirt the same as the original stuff so um yeah i got spread shirt together i was speaking to oh who was i speaking to evil dark i think he's a really nice mm-hmm. guy on instagram as well he's got some crazy music but he <laughs> yeah. he was he was bringing up the, the same thing that he's trying to figure out a merch store so we were chatting, and he was like, well, I used to use Spreadshirt. And I was like, oh, what's Spreadshirt? So turns out it's dead easy. You can just make the, the designs that I make and just upload. So I've got uh, four stores, which sounds a bit crazy. But there's two each, uh, two for the UK, Europe side, and two for the US side, because you guys have a huge country. So true. I wanted to make sure that shipping was totally fair. I don't want to make sure that people are like, if people in America really like the designs, I don't want to have to buy stuff from Europe and then ship it over because that's absolutely tragic. And then mm. vice versa. I don't want people like having to buy U.S. stuff in Europe because import tax and all kinds of stuff. It's crazy. Mm. You're going to be paying more for shipping than the actual merchandise. So 
I've got two. I've got um, a Final Shift store where it's the, the artwork and the logo on top. And then I've got Shift Art, which is the same designs just without the logo. So if you don't like my music, but you like the artwork, you can buy those clothes or whatever <laughs> else. I think I put everything, you can like get it on cups and mugs and bottles and all kinds of stuff. Cushions as well, I think. Pillows. Hmm, but, very uh, nice. That's just my latest thing, is it just to keep myself creative while I'm at work, is to make this artwork. So I really enjoy like the kind of same vibe that the songs have, quite glitchy, quite distorted, quite crazy. So I use that and put it on T-shirts. Uh, I'm trying nice, to man. get them. Yeah, well, thank you very much. They're, they're really good fun to make. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, I already got the links, by the way, but I need to go ahead and take a look and see... Uh... What exactly is going to fit my eye in approval? Which, by the way, you did a nice rendition of the J360 logo in Final Shift style. That was cool. Yeah. Thank you, man. That that was really good fun to do. That was really funny. Yeah, 100% respect on that. I was like, all right. You've got to give me some more because I'm happy to do some more for you. That would be really good fun. Just just whatever you want to do with it. Yeah, I'm definitely going to look into that because I was thinking since things have gotten global around here, I guess I am going to have to probably look into that two-store format like you doing, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> it's, it's, it's really easy to do as well. It's so simple, and it's free. So building up is really good fun. That sounds like but, a plan. Uh, do it, dude. Do it. Do it. It's really good fun. And um, <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure like, the, the reach you get, the audience you get, everyone's really great. I'm sure you'll, you'll get some people wearing G360 stuff. Hey, you know J-Man it. J-Man top. Especially, yeah. Especially out of the wild stuff that my cartoon avatar says up and says. <laughs> yes, man. That would be so good. I would wear that so hard. You got to put on a t-shirt, dude. I'll wear it. <laughs> you know it. Shoot. Absolutely. Yep, yeah. Yeah, man. And, and truth be told, that'll roll out sometime soon. I'm keeping it under wraps, though. But don't worry. Everybody Ooh. gets to know. And you get to know. So, yep. Preemptive advertising. Here we go. You know it. <laughs> but, Let's man, get it done, I'm buddy. I can't wait. Yup. And I definitely, uh, you know something, if you ever need, like, uh, vocals or somebody to say something on, like, one of your songs, you know, let me know sometime. I'll jump in and go ahead and do it. We I've done it for Moon Warner, and um, I've done it for Space Force, of course. And, uh, yeah, like, I, I don't mind doing that. I love, like, one of the things I wanted to do was voice acting, too. So, you know, why not? <laughs> yes, man. Well, I like, there's, like, obviously with Replicants Rise, is that bit right at the start? That was, um me trying to sound evil and then running through, uh, oh, I think it's Ovox from Waves. Oh. That's a really cool uh, vocalizer since um, you can run your, I used to use Morph Odor and stuff like that. And Ovox came out and it's like, oh, this is amazing. Nice. So that was just, just making it sound a bit crazy. Yes, man, absolutely. I need to get a load of different samples off you and I'll just <laughs> use them everywhere. That'd be hey, really good fun. That'll work. Shoot. See, that's what it's all about, people. Ha! Connections. Now, don't y'all Networking. feel like you haven't done that well? You got to get started then. You got to talk to people. Being all isolated and yeah. shit. <laughs> I'm so guilty for doing that. I just, I once I get focused on stuff, I, I just lose all social connection. I need to keep keep active in the networking industry. So, yeah. Well, I have I to, keep, to keep in uh, touch with you. I'll have to keep messaging you then. Just be like, hey, man, what you doing? <laughs> Checking on me every now and again. Are you sleeping? Are you eating? No. All right, cool. At least you make your music. <laughs> yeah, you know, hey, that's kind of how I used to want to do things. Like when I started uh, doing J360 production, I was like, okay, well, you know, I kind of need to be out there. I need to be in the in, in their face. And then there's times where I need to like pop up on their shows or whatever. Like if they're doing different things, like kind of like how the Energizer Bunny used to do it. Like I would just like try to pop on people's sets and be like, huh, this is nice. Oh, don't worry. This is just yeah. a random cameo. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, that, that's how I, I, that I've been kind of getting a bit ballsy when it's like trying to speak to people. So when I, when I really like um, what someone's doing, I'll, I'll kind of pop up in their DMS and whether or not they reply to me is totally their own choice. And most of the time they don't, but, like if if I see someone I'm really I really like or something, for example, uh, there's this really cool uh, artist. Oh, do you know Periphery? I think so. I think I have you heard of that band. Oh, Periphery, yeah, yeah, yeah. there's a really uh, yeah, 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 the massive yeah, yeah. gent band. Well, progressive metal, yeah. Hey, uh, progressive metal's good. Progressive metal is very good, and those guys are really good at it. Um, one of the their old singers, Casey, uh, he's based in LA, funnily enough, and he's really? been doing his his new singles of the past year uh, are they're insane. So 
I, I, I did never, I never expected him to get in touch uh, or even reply. So I shot him a message a few months ago, and that's how the. I don't know if you've gone way back in the Instagram account, but there's a, a vocal cover that I did a long time ago, last year, of one of his songs, and it is tragic and it is not good. But uh, I sent it to him, and uh, we're chatting. He's a really good guy, and his, his songs are oh my god! If you like mine. His his are just terrifying. His are like commercial grade songs. It's just madness. But he he's a really good guy. I didn't expect him to ever talk to me. But that's kind of like trying to reach out and network and trying to find people that are much better than you, so you can learn from them. And that's uh, it. Kind of play with the big boys. Yeah, I mean, that's how else are we going to compete? And you know, not only that, that's how it. else are we going to make our mark for like the new generation? I've been saying that for years, dude. I was like. You know, everybody's kind of falling asleep on the new voices out here. I mean, there, let, let's just be honest. There are some people out there that are not that good, but you never know. In, like, years to come, they could probably be better. And then not only that, it's all about the will to be that way, you know? And oh, then, God, like, yeah. Pe- people will want that immediate result. I remember somebody telling me that. I was like, you know, it'd be kind of nice to get, like, well over, like, a million followers and stuff or all that kind of crap. Yeah, I say crap, but you know, it's it's good to get that, but you know, the journey is a lot better one way or another. I see yeah. like people get famous a little very quickly and then they fall apart in like two years or so. Like, and then it's like, well, they it's weren't even famous stress. at all. Yeah. You know, the fame is incredibly stressful. Like I remember as a kid, I'd be like watching like big rock stars and stuff and be like, Oh my God, their life's incredible. And then you see like what they have to do every day. Like mm-hmm. they have to get ready every day. They have to look a certain way every day. It's like makeup, the right clothes, right attitude, and it might not even be like who you are. Like who you are as a person, it becomes a commercial product, and then those people get totally swamped. Yeah, and it's really crazy. Like, and I don't think if like the people that gradually get into it, the people that don't blow up overnight, like it, it, it's an easier transition a little bit because they go from like hundred people like them to thousand to ten thousand to like, and they gradually build up into it. So, like, yeah, bands like Trivium and, like, Matt Heafy, the singer and guitar player, he's really humble. He's a really nice guy. He's really funny. And he's you can tell he's genuine. He's really sincere. Yeah. And you get people that blew up, like like you say, straight up overnight, and they just can't hack it. It's like the like, like people that had a meme around them, and then that mm-hmm. meme suddenly goes around the planet. And then they, they have to have that attitude because that's the attitude of the meme, but it might not be that person. Right. So they get burnt out quickly because suddenly – They've gone from like working at Walmart or Lowe's to having like 10 million people seeing their face all day, every day on like these TikToks or Instagram or anything like that. These blow up and they can't handle it. There's there's no gradual progression. It's just sudden, like light switch, and you just get blinded. Mm-hmm. And, and then not only that. But... Oh, go on, go on. No, I, I was just going to say it must be really terrifying. Well, like, can you imagine yeah. like stepping out your front door and there's like a million people there watching everything you do? Yeah, man, yeah, that's that's just it's crazy, scary. And not only that, like, <laughs> um, you know, like when some of them get that condescending attitude, but then like their label drops them and all this extra stuff, like things just fall apart on in, and then yeah, they're and like, then they back. try and they try and get it back by being that same person, mm-hmm. but like amping it up, that or, or they totally lose everything. Uh, it's and, a real shame to see. Yeah, it's it's just it's just one way or another. Like that whole thing, pride comes before a fall. You know. Yeah, yeah. It's like that. And like, it, like all that stuff is true to form. But that's what we were saying earlier. You got to stay humble. You got to stay honest to yourself and be be you. Don't try and be someone else. There's no and, point in trying to be someone else because then you're gonna get caught out. Yeah, you get caught out, and it's not gonna work out anymore. And then I, I don't know why it takes like this many. Uh, many times for people to understand but fame is fickle all right so like oh, say God, like yeah. you get your you get your first pop okay like i mean i'm in my 30s and i don't let it stop me but the point is is this <laughs> like some people will try to use that age thing against you and all that kind of stuff or some people try to say like oh you know well, this person's 19 and they just blew up overnight and it's like okay you know no, yeah that's really good for them i wish them all the best yeah, and then, the, uh, but, and then like the label doesn't want to work with you anymore, all that kind of stupid stuff. It's like, well, that's why you got to have things planned out and ready just in case of that nonsense because fickle is a way. 
Yeah, well, you used to hear loads of stories like uh, labels taking advantage of bands. That used to happen a lot in like the like the eighties, the seventies mm-hmm. and eighties. Record labels used to totally destroy bands. Oh, like, yeah. uh, I like for example, Motley Crue didn't own their discography. Like, and and that su- that sounds like such an odd thing now because like you get all these people like me and like Moon Mourner and like all these different guys that own that make their own release their own music. So mm-hmm. it's theirs. It, it's all theirs. But obviously, back in the day, you couldn't just upload on Instagram. It, the phone didn't exist. Internet didn't exist very much. So you had you had to go to a record company, and the record company would own your music. That's terrifying mm. to me. Or at least and like... Spent... Oh, go on, go on. No, I, no, you go for it. But I was just going to say that, um, that they take decades to buy back their own music. I mean, can you imagine doing that? Can you imagine something owning your podcast and then you have to buy it back from them over like a course of years? It'd be yeah. terrifying, dude. And not only that, like, like before I cut you off, man, I'm sorry if I did that. Oh, no, no. I was, I was about to say, like, and then you fight tooth and nail to get that back, and then chances are you probably didn't get 100% of the royalties back at all. Like, you only got, like, enough to even be, like, you know, to put, like, like let's say, like, a little bit of money in your pocket, you know? Instead of like the yeah. entire entire gross, that's why I always say that too. I'm like, I need a part of the gross. Like uh, as I say it, it is a funny running gag, but the truth is, as I say that, I'm hoping that people are like always aim for gross. That's yeah. what you yeah want to aim always for. always get it. It's like that's the scary thing about YouTube videos. It's a very similar thing. Like if if you've got monetized YouTube videos and then YouTube decides we don't like this and we de- demonetize it, but then you fight for it and then a couple of days later. Yeah, it gets remonetized. The initial burst is gone. Uh-huh. Like, all those, all those initial views, that money is gone. It's like when you using the same thing I was saying earlier. If you use the discography thing, yeah, you can buy back your discography like 10, 20 years later. But by that point, it's a used up product. That's why you get it back. They don't mm-hmm. want it anymore because they juiced everything out of it. So you've literally just got these songs that no one plays anymore, that no one remembers, but it's yours again. So I guess that's the genuine part of it. But all the money is gone. You made like what ten percent, maybe, after like your record company recoups all the expenses of marketing and deploying all the songs, all the the CDs or records, whatever they're doing, cassette tapes, and then your agent gets a big cut, and then the promoters get a cut, and then you get like five cents afterwards, yeah. pennies. Yeah, it's, yeah, pennies, man, pennies. It's absolutely nothing. And then once it's done up, you get it back. Like here, have this withered old husk of a discography. You can't use any of it anymore because no one cares. But it's yours now. And the sad it's like YouTube part of it is, nice. like, yeah, uh, go for it, man. And the sad part of it is, the only way you're ever gonna get the full recoups of all that stuff back, and even after it's all weathered and stuff, and this is sad to say, when you die. That is the one yeah. thing that they care about. Like when a musician is in post humorous, now everybody's like, "Oh, I'm a fan. I, I loved everything he did. Oh, he was great, or she was great." And then like things yeah, skyrocket. It's, then and it's like, it's "Oh my really, god, it's really sad. It's really, it's almost kind of disturbing to watch." Like, um, case in point, I love Prince, dude. Yeah, me too. Dude, I, I Prince, genius, absolute yes. genius, mad yes. eccentric. He was crazy. Oh, Lived in yes. his own little world, but God, he was amazing. Like, have you heard like how he did his first? He recorded everything on his first album, and yes. like when he got signed, they were like, "Oh, we're going to get you this mixing engineer," and he was like, "No, nah, I'm doing it myself." Yeah, and that was unheard of. And he, he was always doing it himself. He was crazy. But when he passed, um, well, one thing I was a crying little child in bed for most of the day because mm-hmm. like Prince is absolutely amazing, and it was a shock when he left. Me too. But man. um that was really not a nice day at all. I, re- I still remember it was awful. Um mm-hmm. but uh he had like a vault, the infamous Prince vault where like he had dozens of albums, like hours of hours of songs that he just didn't think were good enough. And you then know? his estate just started making them. His estate were like, "Ah, he's dead now, so let's just keep making some money off of it." And it like I guess a part of it is like, yes, this is the unreleased stuff for his real fans. But also at the same time, you're selling it. Yeah. You're like, you don't need to make money off Prince anymore. Prince made millions. He, he, like, he's, he was one of the biggest artists in the world for a long time. You don't need any of that money. So why not just leave him to peace? But then you start seeing like uncut 
unreleased demo tracks for yeah. sale. And you're like, oh, come on. Yeah. I mean, you know. Just off of them. Yeah, that, that that was Warner Brothers thing doing that. And not only that, the people that are part of Prince's estate went ahead with that. And they turned um, Paisley Park into a museum and all that stuff. They they just went well, wild with that That kind of stuff. thing I can appreciate. That, well, yeah. Making it a museum, that, uh, that's a nice dedication. But yeah. like, releasing the stuff he didn't want released is... It's almost like going back on him because he's not there anymore. Yeah, it's going against his wishes for sure. I mean, they're, well, they're doing the same thing that they did to Graceland. I think, if anything, Michael Jackson got it hard, too, because, um, well, not only the uh, rumors and all that extra stuff that happened. Stuff, yeah. yeah. But also, they went ahead and they released a lot of his un, unreleased material. Like, Escape was an album manufactured by Sony. I was like, what the hell are you guys doing? He's yeah, dead. He's gone. Can you just leave him? Just yeah. leave him. He had, he had a... I don't want to call it sordid, but it was definitely blotchy. Like, you, you couldn't tell what was going on. Some of it didn't feel right. Some of it looked legit, and I'm not going to go into it because right. uh, so that's a whole other bed of bugs. Let's not do that. But well, well, let's put a pen in thing. that. Like, yeah, but it's like that that whole attitude of, they're gone now. Let's make some more money off them. It's just, uh, it's it's kind of disgusting. Now, the one that it deserves you, it is Elvis. <laughs> Oh, like oh god! Oh, I, I do those El- I, I do those Elvis jokes all the time, man. <laughs> My wife loves Elvis. Uh, she she absolutely loves Elvis. It's like a family thing. But uh, I think her and her mom really like Elvis. But uh, yeah, some some of the things he's been accused of now now that like well, it's a different time now, and that, yeah. that's a really bad excuse for yeah, anything isn't it, in though? history. But it's, it's like yeah. I mean, it's a really our- bad excuse. But it is like things are much different now. I mean, are we going to do the same thing to Gary that. Glitter when he goes? Oh God! Like, <laughs> Jesus, man! You know Come I had to throw, You know I had to throw that in there. <laughs> oh, that's so bad. Oh, no. Are we going to? Let's not do that. <laughs> oh man, I, I, I just had to get you with that one. <laughs> that, that, but yeah, oh, I, God, I, I, to- I totally agree with you about Prince, dude. I was like, oh my God, I- he didn't want these singles released. He didn't want some of these things out here to the public eye. If I was in charge of his estate, if I was the retainer of his estate, nobody would ever see it. But how much would it go for? That, that, that's, the, that's the question. Like everyone's, supposedly everyone's got their price. So well, you ev- could everyone be the most, does, but. You could be the most zealous like a gatekeeper of that back catalog, but some record company is going to make some money on it, and they're either going to try and get you out the way, or they're trying to buy you out. And they'll just come to you and be like, "How much?" Yeah. And eventually, like people who are less stoic, and I'm sure you're very, very stoic and very strong-minded, and you wouldn't buckle, but some people do, or some people are out to make a buck, and that's how they do it. And it's just, it's just not cool, man. It's not yeah, fun. It's not. I mean, like, we, we live in a time where there are, like, you and I, we have morals, okay? And, like, quite a lot of the people in, well, well, okay, okay. Like, I'm just, uh, now look. <laughs> Assume we have morals. <laughs> all right, all right. For the sake of the J360 Legion, we have morals. But the thing is, is that there, there are people out there have zero to none. So, you know, which is the same thing, but you know what I mean. Yeah, and uh yeah they'll, they'll sell out they'll sell out quick for just one dollar i mean people are crazy enough to do that well i just advertised my shopping store on your podcast <laughs> well that was <laughs> different i'm helping things. well that was different uh, you you make it a business you alive well, okay. yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to like make i'm not trying to take advantage of anyone to do it i'm just trying to make my way in the world but so, so you're absolutely right but that's why it's morality and not law there's a difference between what's legally right and what's morally correct you know what i mean mm-hmm. doing something perfectly legal but it doesn't mean it's the right thing to do it doesn't mean it's just yeah. so yeah they, they'll just skirt their way around things and make money however they can and you know what all the best of them because that takes skill yeah. it takes skill and a real dedication to what they're doing feel bad about what they're doing it's almost like death to righteous things man it's almost like death's very own emissary Death's very emissary. Oh, that yeah. was a transition and a half, dude. I like that. Yeah, I'm, I'm just letting you know, man. You got some skills, don't you know it? <laughs> <laughs> this man is going places. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way. And then, and you know it. what? As we speak about it, though, do you have a story that you want to tell us uh, before the track or after the track, my friend? Death's very emissary. That was um, 
I don't want to get like a lawsuit or anything like that. The artwork has a distinct face in it. Oh, if you've okay. seen the single release, if you look at the artwork for the single, the Deathfire Emissary, it's a reference to John Wick. That Very whole nice. that whole franchise, Deathfire. I think he's there's something. Uh, I, I, I'm struggling to remember now. You put me on the spot. How dare you? Um, <laughs> no, I've a uh, there's there's a there's a reference to him being the death very death emissary or something like that. And me and Addy liked that, so we wrote a song that was kind of uh, sinister, uh, and sinister and quite uh, rushed and kind of exciting. And that it, it tried to emulate the same vibe you get from watching the John Wick films. Like oh, nice. it's a really thriller. It's thrilling. It's exciting. There's emotion in it. It's all it's all over the place. There's no like there's it's like very linear, and you know what's going to happen, but you don't know how it's going to get there. So huh. I, I really wanted to kind of put that impression through the song, and I'm not sure if I succeeded or not, but it's a good fun. I really enjoyed making it, and I really enjoy listening to it. Still, it's one of those songs that I like listening to. I mean, I think you did because one way or another, I get like final battle vibes all the time. Like say, like when I'm finishing a script or I'm getting the playlist ready for jams. One way or another, somebody's <laughs> winning tonight. Damn it! Damn it! Yeah, <laughs> it's a good, I really like that song. It's a good song. For you me, know it, anyway. my man. And guess what? Hey, while we're at it, you know what? Why don't you say it this time? Oh, how do I do this? I'm by no means talented like you do. How do I do this? Take it away. God. Okay. Um, third and final song is by Final Shift, and it's called Death's Very Emissary. Take it away.
Help spread love and feel the joy of giving back. During the 2023 Subaru Share the Love event at Beardmore Subaru, Subaru will donate $250 to the charity of your choice for every new Subaru purchased or leased. The ASBCA, Make-A-Wish, Meals on Wheels, the National Park Foundation, the Housing Foundation of Sarpy County, or off at Air Force Base's Airman's Attic. Plus, we will give an additional $100 locally to help even more. Go to BeardmoreSubaru.com to learn more. Submit charity selection by 1-12-24. Promotion ends 1-2-24. See Subaru.com for more details. The holidays start here at Baker's with a variety of options to celebrate traditions old and new. Whether you're making a traditional roasted turkey or spicy turkey tacos, your go-to shrimp cocktail, or your first Cajun risotto, Baker's has all the freshest ingredients to embrace your traditions. Baker's, fresh for everyone. We've locked in low prices to help you save big store-wide. Look for the locked in low prices tags and enjoy extra savings throughout the store. Baker's, fresh for everyone. And that was Death's Very Emissary from Final Shift. And by the way, great introduction, my man. I couldn't have done it better myself. I'm proud of you. It sounded way better when you said it there. Hey, hey, hey don't even try it. <laughs> like, you did good. It. You did good, all right? <laughs> I'm going to listen back to this and be like, oh, no. Why did I do that? <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, it's all good. Like, I remember one time when I did the J-Man show and I did a team up. This is before I had this show. So there were moments where I did have somebody right. guest star. And I had um, her introduce the uh, the whole thing. Like, welcome to the J-Man show. Like, nobody could do it like that. But the funny part is... She nailed it. And I was like, yes. Way to go, girl. Proud of you. Get it, get it, get it, get it. <laughs> now, now I know there was a really good standard and I've just totally limboed under it. <laughs> well, hey, if you limbo oh, under bar. something. There's a really high bar, man. Well, you went under it and that's how you win. Right. <laughs> you go under the high bar. That's how you uh, win, though. You have to go under the nail. Yep, shoot. I mean, one way or another, I'm going to start working on getting my yoga skills together so I can start limboing. Because nowadays, I just go ahead and uh, walk all walk all into shit like Godzilla and stuff like that. That's what I do. Forget limbo bars. Walk through it. I got places to be. Oh, yeah, just... yeah, yeah, yeah. Places to be and people to do. I mean, Whoa. okay, Damn, okay, dude. okay. Okay, okay. <laughs> I, 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 okay, okay. I'll reel it back. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Dear me. Well, it is the uncut. No, I, well, I suppose so. Well, fuck. You got to say what you got to say. And it's your show. If you feel confident saying it, I ain't going to say a damn thing. You want to say it, it's yours. I'm oh, just going to well, well, keep been quiet been... in the corner over here. Hey, <laughs> hey, you hey, hey, hey. It was funny at the time. Now, let's just say <laughs> it was funny at the time. <laughs> All right. oh, in hindsight. Man. Yeah. Uh, you know what? It'd be crazy, right? Like, you know, imagine like a sketch, right? Like I'm sitting at a judge's stand and they're saying, all right, Jay, did you really say all this stuff? Of course, they would say my last name, but I didn't feel like saying it. Uh, and that's the scenario. Yeah. Like, all right, Jay, did you actually say what you said? Yeah, I think I did. And then they play it back on like when I actually said what I said. And I'm like, and I see nothing wrong with any of this. <laughs> Give me some popcorn. <laughs> I'm going to watch all these people go crazy. Go oh, yeah, I'm going to sit back and watch. This is the way to Take get viral off. right here. <laughs> Do something controversial and just live it. Earn it. Hey, but that, we that's talk- the thing. That's what it kind of circles back to what we're talking about with fame. Yes. Do something controversial. But if you are going to do something controversial, at least be honest about it. Yeah. If it's an opinion you have, make sure it is yours. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's the beauty of it. I mean, one way or another. Eric Bischoff said it best, controversy makes cash, but people just try to do it and they do it in a lazy way. I remember when it was kind of an art form at one time. It took skill. Well, I think I think today it's all been done. It's like it's like trying to write a new song. It's like yeah, some of it will be altogether. It will be new, but a lot of it will be stuff that has already been done. So it, yeah. it's like you can't have a massive like oh my god, what are they doing? You can't like I've uh, I have a hobby in looking at the history of like sound engineering and how it was how recordings were done back in the day, but like you can't like flip tape anymore you can't just make something make a crazy noise that's never been done before because it has so you can't really be controversial by doing the same stuff as it's already happened because people have already seen it they're really blasé about it because yeah it's been done Mm -hmm. so you have to really stick out but to stick out you've got to be someone you're not because to really stick out you have to become something that isn't normal whatever normal is but to like actually be crazy these days you have to be insane 
you have to be genuinely crazy. Otherwise, people are going to find out that you're actually a normal person that just acts crazy every now and again, and it's not as fun. Yeah, and that's the unfortunate I have no idea what I'm talking about. No, no, that was that was beautiful. Whatever the hell you just said, man. But let me just say, that's wild, right? <laughs> <laughs> Looks him back and just be like, "What is he talking about? What? Why is he saying that?" No, you're right Shut because <laughs> nowadays you gotta you gotta go that extra mile. And see, the problem is when people go to extra mile, they don't really they don't really care usually. But there's responsibilities for it. It's kind of like when I say what I need to say, I fully. I'm aware of what I just said. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's like, yeah. yeah, I'm, like, yeah. I, I'm like, I, I know that there's going to be some problems. I know there's somebody out there butt hurt right now. I mean, I did an episode on um talking about this one person who has an OnlyFans account, right? And the way like she kept going about okay. marketing herself. And I was like, I'm not your mark. Beat it. Go find somebody else. <laughs> and the I dude. I never understood that. <laughs> never do that like but what's funny is is like um the dude came in there he was mad he was like oh you should get someone on your show i was like first off i get whoever i want on my shows biatch not at your discretion and yeah. not only that yeah it's your show and, and he's like this he's like oh uh, oh uh, you know it, it, that's the hustle meg the stallion and i'm like you name drop dude your whole thing's irrelevant i don't care about none of that i'm talking yeah. about I'm talking about business practices. I'm not talking about OnlyFans. OnlyFans can exist because OnlyFans does exist. I don't give a shit about that. But it's the way people come and present themselves. There's a level of standard. And he's like, your standard. I was like, exactly, idiot. That's the yeah. point. <laughs> you, you, your standard is your perspective of the world. So, of course, like, if something isn't up to your standard, you don't get involved in it. And that's, that's not your fault. I that's, mean, yeah. That's not your problem either. So if someone's got a problem, with you not wanting to have some like for example anyone on your show that does that fine that, that's your it's your show you run the right. ship so no but I, I never understood that kind of only fans thing like i understand the premise and it's kind of like patreon in a little bit you have yeah. subscribers and stuff as far as i know but oh dude it like I, if i was to do something like that it'd be like patreon but it'd be like here's a lick that i'm working on here's a riff that i'm working on here's here's like a synth sound that i've just curated and i really like like and i want to show it to you guys but it's not a song but it's my work, so I'm kind of like offering an opportunity to like see my behind the scenes work, if that makes sense, of like yeah. developing sounds and crafting melodies and whatnot that I wouldn't necessarily put out as a polished product, and I might even not see the light of day as a song. But if you guys want to see my process and stuff, then sure, pay for that if you really want to. But it's entirely up to you. But whereas, like, I like it's why I'm kind of scared of Twitter is like I will follow like a band or I'll follow like someone that I like or like an artist. And then you'll see like retweets and it'll be like top 5%. I'm like top 5% of what? Like whoever, you, whatever you're doing and whatever you're exposing of yourself, that's no longer yours. Like there's some things that well, I, I'm not going to be religious cause I'm not, but like I, I strongly believe that some parts of like intimacy and exposing yourself are only meant for people that you care about and people that matter the most to you. And this is where I become an awful romantic. But like to me, like exposing yourself is something you shouldn't do unless it's for someone special. Oh my god, here we go. That's pathetic. No, no, you know what I mean. Like if you want to make money with yourself, by all means, like use the most the most ancient of of traditions. Like use the most ancient business in the world. Do it if that's your thing. Go for it. But I'm not interested. I have my own values, my own perspective, my own standards. Like you were saying. So yeah. to me, it's the most uninteresting, dodgy, awkward thing that I can consider. But I'm, if if you're happy doing it, go and do it. But it's not it's not the way I live my life. Right. I mean, like you know, when I see it up from time to time, I'm like, well, you gotta figure that if you're the one person that saw it, there's about at least like a thousand or more that's seen it too, and that's just the way it goes. It's like you know, uh, when you see like certain people go it, ahead and they, huh? I was gonna say, I suppose there's nothing really wrong with that. I mean, yeah. like you're saying, people have different opinions and perspectives. And yeah. So there may well be like people that are like, oh, dude, it's just the body. It's just art. But come on. Like I mean, some of it isn't art. Some of it's just like you've got to have a level where you're just like, this is just stuff that you should be searching on a like a secret tab on your browser. Yeah. You shouldn't be looking at this. This isn't, this isn't work friendly. This isn't like house friendly. What are you doing? 
Not, not at all. This is this is window shopping for the um for the single shot bros. You know what I mean? The ones that need to go ahead and get the get 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 a good a little chugging in there, you know, make it all oh, happen. A little adult are being content. Stressed. <laughs> I, 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 you could probably correlate the people that like that kind of thing with people that have a really strong opinion over things that don't really matter or affect their lives. Oh, you know dude, what I mean? He, the kind of people that he was bent out of shape. I mean, I was like, wow. Um, who would have thought the mini bites would actually get this guy's ass red? How do you like uh, that? I was like, let me make more episodes. People get angry over anything. Like, oh, like yeah. there's what, like eight and a bit billion people on this planet. There's no way you're not going to offend at least one person on the planet by saying something. You, whatever you say is going to irritate or make someone really upset. I'm like, that's yeah. not my problem. Like, <laughs> I, I, I might not be overly offensive, but if I'm saying what I want to say, it's because I mean it. I'm not right. going to say something disingenuous just to make someone else happy. Yeah. I mean, there's enough aloe in the world for that burn. Oh, anyway. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, dude. Oh, man. I, I, I'm just like, it, it's funny as hell because, like, it never stopped me at all, obviously. But the funny part is I was like, it's amazing how somebody can go into left field based off of no evidence at all. <laughs> yeah. Just go off on one. I have, like, the tiniest comment. Like, yeah, no, it's just people. People, I think people have too much spare time sometimes, and it's like, is it your business? No, then no. why are you getting upset about it? Like, it, like you're not making anything out of this. You, it's nothing to do with you. Why, why have you got such a strong opinion over it? Why are you getting so angry over something that doesn't directly affect you? Like, I, I'd get really angry if someone increased my tax. Like, if yeah. I have to pay more money out, that that gets to me. That irritates me. I'm gonna have an opinion on that. Oh, yeah, someone yeah, on the definitely. other side of the planet is like is selling whatever they want to whoever they want and they're making a business out of it good great for them but it's nothing yeah. to do with me so i don't really care yeah unless it's like human trafficking because that's inherently wrong but you well know what I mean. you yeah I, I know what you mean but you know the funny <laughs> part about it is <laughs> it gets even funnier dude that dude was old as shit by the way I'm going to tell you, he was an old, crusty oh, man. No. And, and guess what? You know, like, Colonel Sanders from KFC, right? Yeah. It's Colonel Sanders crazy. looked younger than that motherfucker. I was like, oh, what the oh, hell? God. I was like, nah, Have nah. You seen that? Have you seen that? Like, on Instagram, there's, like, a post of, like, anyone remotely female. There's always, like, and it's got a few thousand likes on it. There's always going to be a comment, like, oh, you're so beautiful. And it's, like, this dude who was awake when, like, Hitler was in power in Germany. Like he's really old. Yeah. He's really he has no business on being involved in a photo like that because that could be his great granddaughter. And you're just like, come on, man. I mean, at the like, end of the at day, least age with some sensibility. I mean, I mean, we call him out yeah. on it too. He said, "I've seen people like you in the war," and I was like, "Were well, you Union or Confederate, motherfucker?" <laughs> <Things like that. laughs> oh, no. I was like. <laughs> <laughs> um, see that's how much of an asshole i am at that point because <laughs> i start going at you on that be like shit yeah. one way or another nothing came out of it except the broken ussr what are you fucking talking about dude go away nobody cares about what you think berlin wall <laughs> fell so should you <laughs> you're going age with grace come on dude you're doing so well and then you slipped up at the last right oh no <laughs> the last marker you got so close to the end of the book the last chapter come on man. <laughs> i'm agreeing with you i mean and it's the same thing with music too like when people older than you are saying that good music is gone and i'm like no it's not i host the show it's not gone yeah now that i've kind of been through a different phase or two of listening to music like I was saying, I got raised on um, like Metallica and Ozzy Osbourne and like Motley Crue and Thin Lizzy and all these like big bands from the seventies and eighties. And th there's definitely a demographic that still stays in that time period because that's what they like list listening to. But the thing is, if you keep listening to stuff like that constantly and you don't listen to anything newer or different at all, you don't expand your musical horizons, you're going to think that you're mm -hmm. going to think, oh, it's just noise. And, and I, I was guilty for doing that. Absolutely, I think everyone is when. You listen to the same kind of music again and again and again. That's your wheelhouse and that's where you're happy. And then something else comes on. You go, oh, no, put it off. This is all new and new is awful. But, like, don't get me wrong. There are some new songs out there that are tragic. But there's also some songs from the past that are absolutely awful as well. You just don't oh, play yes. them. Don't listen to them. That's what I was going to say when, when that guy was going off on you because you wouldn't put whatever that situation was. Like, everyone's got their own wheelhouse. Everyone's got their own business. And what they like and what they don't like. And 
it's not really up to anyone else to police that right. unless it goes beyond like a line of legality of course but like see if it's all fine and above board that's what the person likes you have no you have no jurisdiction on that person's taste so what's the point if you don't like it don't watch it don't comment on it just leave it alone and do something that you actually enjoy doing don't waste your time complaining about something you don't like if you can't change it what's the point wow it makes a lot went, of sense that went really long <laughs> No, 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 speak man. Sense every now and again. It's like, when you speak truth like that, man, I'm allow you to go as long as you got to go. I'm like, right there. Yeah, right rant. there is how I, it works. I will rant so bad sometimes. Hey, man, you're on the right show to, to do it. it. My, you are on the right show to do it. My wife loves it. I'll come home from work and be like, growl, growl, growl. And she'll be like, yep, okay, have a cup of coffee. You're fine. <laughs> I'll just listen. <laughs> yeah, man. Like, yeah. like I said, that's that's what this show's designed for, man. It's designed for you to go ahead, speak your piece. You're just shooting the shit with J Man, having a good time, and then you're having an awesome interview session, which we did. And um, I'm gonna tell you the truth, man. Um, it was a delight having you here. This was a lot better than I expected. So one way or another, you knocked Thank it out you. of the park, brother. It's really amazing. Yeah, I'm just saying. Thank you, man. It's been an honor to be here, and I'm happy to come back. Hell yeah, um, you will too. Whether, I know whether it. it's yeah, good, like I really enjoyed it, and hopefully, the more times I do it, the better I'll get at it. <laughs> oh, you, you will, you uh, will, man. You did a good job. I don't know why you're being all modest right now, especially after what I, you I'm just, just said. Trying to be honest, dude. <laughs> well, I'm just trying to be honest, man. Like, like wheelhouse, you got to stay in your own wheelhouse. Be honest mm-hmm. to who you are. Be sincere. Be grateful. I'm always grateful, man. Like, mm-hmm. thank you very much for this opportunity and whatnot. You got any advice for any uh, future artists out there or people that really need it? If you like it and you want to make it, make it and just do it. That was that was something I really struggled with for a long time. Is um, I I was worried about doing music at all because uh, I had people saying that well, people around me. This sounds like so celebrity. I had people doubting me. No, no, it wasn't necessarily that. It's just people want me to be successful in what I'm doing. But you don't know if you're going to be successful until you actually attempt it. So if you want to write music, you want to release music, do it. Just do it. And if it's bad, it's bad. But someone's going to like it. And if you like it and you think it's not as good as it could be, just improve. Learn and do it again. Do it again and again and again. If that's what you like doing, just do it. That, that's my advice. And that's what I'm doing. It might not be great and it might not sound commercial and amazing, but it's sounding better every time, I'd like to think. Hey, and that's the beauty of the journey, my man. And like I said, I'm going to be there behind your journey every time. Be there along with you every step of the way. I'm a fan. What can I say? I'm a fan of you, man. That's really good of you to say that, and I really appreciate the support. And it's it's been amazing doing this. Thank of you so course. much. Anytime, man. And by the way, you want to drop some links so people can actually follow you and seek out your music and everything? I mean, I'm going to put some links down at the bottom, but I know they like to hear from the source. Okay. The uh, the best one is Instagram. That's at finalshift.official on Instagram. And that's where you'll see like, the reels of the tracks. Uh, uh, I think every song is on there as an IGTV video with a wee bit of artwork. I do nearly daily pieces of art every day if you like that kind of stuff, like digital corrupted stuff. I use a lot of Glitch Lab and Mirror Lab. Um, and then on Twitter, I'm at Jack Fox Vision. And I've been posting on there a little bit more. I'm trying to get Twitter going a little bit. Still a wee bit apprehensive because of the aforementioned people on there. But that's good. Um, YouTube, I'm doing a couple of bits on YouTube. That's Final Shift and Jack Fox as a channel. That's where you're going to see, uh, the again, the Final Shift tracks go up. And I'm doing some vocal covers every now and again. I'm actually doing a few more of them in the next couple of weeks. But uh, that's pretty much it. Instagram and Twitter and YouTube. That's my main places. And uh, obviously I've got the Spreadshirt shops, but um, that's Final Shift UK and Final Shift US and then Shift Art UK and Shift Art US. Very nice. Very nice. (laughs) Well, man, guess what? That is Hangouts Episode 6. We did it. Hey, that was good fun. We did it. And we knocked it out and everything else. And for anybody that really wants to um, check out Final Shift, and I suggest you do, I'm going to come after you if you don't. One way or another, J-Man will show up and throw you right over to where anybody in the Jam fam is performing so that you can get a taste of that good music and that good riff. And as far as I'm concerned, now's the perfect time to get involved. Support all local and independent musicians. The future voices are out there, folks. 
That's what it's all about. But until then, I want to thank Jack Fox for being here with us tonight. And I also want to give a shout out to um, Addy, wherever you are. Because one way or another, you guys are two awesome dudes. Keep making this stuff happen. Keep making that magic. And one way or another, I want to thank the J360 Legion for listening tonight. I'll catch you all next time. We got, oh, actually, Jack, we got um, Jam 22 up, coming up next Friday. Oh, yes. Yeah. I'm oh, stoked yeah. for that. That's going to be great. Yeah, you know, it's going to be great, man. Hey, by the way, uh, you thinking about making an appearance on the um, playlist? I'm always happy to make an appearance on the playlist, dude. Always, hey, there, always, hey. always. Get me hey, on it. There it is. There it is. So while we're on it, though, we're going to get on out of here, guys. So take it easy tonight, all right? Peace to y'all. Judy was boring. Hello. Then Judy discovered Jumbacasino.com. It's my little escape. Now Judy's the life of the party. Oh, baby, mama's bringing home the bacon. Whoa, take it easy, Judy. <laughs> The Chumba Life is for everybody. So go to ChumbaCasino.com and play over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. Voidware prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Okay, round two. Name something that's not boring. A laundry? Ooh, a book club. Computer solitaire, huh? Ah. Oh. Sorry, we were looking for Chumba Casino. That's right, ChumbaCasino.com has over 100 casino style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchases, only by law, 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details.